we're given the vector function r of t equal to t minus 4 over radical t minus 2, comma, t plus 6, comma, e to the t minus 4. We want to find the limit as t goes to 4 of r of t, and we want the derivative of r at the point t equals 9. So, limit and derivative, the procedure is you just do your limit and derivative for each component. If it makes sense in each component, then that's going to be your answer. Okay, if something goes wrong in any of your components, then you're going to wind up with does not exist or no answer. So, the limit. First, all these functions look continuous. So let's see what happens if we try to evaluate. If I put a 4 in to each component, what happens? First component, I get 0 over 0. So that means we're going to need to do more work. Second component, 4 plus 6 is 10. That's a perfectly good number. e to the 4 minus 4, e to the 0 is equal to 1. That's also a perfectly good number. So we're good in the y and z slots. We just have to work out what's going to happen in x. Here, we're going to have a few options. So, since we're doing calculus, let's remind ourselves of how Lahopital's rule works. What happened here? We took the limit, t going to 4, we get a 0 over 0. So that's an indeterminate form, Lahopital's rule applies. What does that tell me? That tells me I could take the derivative of my numerator over derivative of my denominator and then try to put 4 in again. So, if we take these derivatives, numerator goes to a 1, denominator goes to 1 half, t to the minus 1 half. If we put 4 in now, what's going to happen is going to be a perfectly good number. Okay, it's kind of a mess, but it's still a number. So this is going to get us to our answer. To clean up, what do we do? I don't like the 1 half. I don't like the 4 to the 1 half with a minus sign on it. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2 times 4 to the 1 half. So in the top, I'll have 2 times 4 to the 1 half. Of course, 4 to the 1 half is just square root of 4, which is 2. Then the denominator, the 2 and the 1 half go away. 4 to the minus 1 half, 4 to the 1 half cancel each other out for 1. So I'm left with 2 times 2, and I get 4. So our answer is going to be 4, 10, 1. So that's our limit. Another way to do this, I could notice that t minus 4 is the difference of two squares. That's going to be radical t plus 2 times radical t minus 2. And then you'll note the radical t minus 2 will factor out. And then when I put 4 into radical t plus 2, we get 4 again. Okay, another way, which is actually the same exact trick, is to note I could try to rationalize the denominator here by multiplying by radical t plus 2. And then you're going to wind up getting the same answer. Okay, second part r prime at 9. So we're going to take the derivative in each component, then put 9 in. So you'll notice the y component is pretty easy. That goes to 1. For the z component, we have e to the t minus 4. The rule for the derivative of an exponential is okay, e to the function. You're going to just return e to the function and then multiply by the derivative of your function. So we just rewrite e to the t minus 4. Derivative of t minus 4 with respect to t is 1. So that's going to be derivative in the z component. And then in the x component, again, we're going to need to do some work. So this is quotient rule. Okay, so low d high less high d low over low squared. We work it out. Okay, it's a big mess. But when you stick your 9 in, what's going to happen? We're going to wind up with a 1 minus 1 sixth times 5 over 1 squared. So for my final answer, I'm going to get 1 sixth, 1 e to the fifth.